this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, I want to welcome you to this beautiful Sunday here in, I'm in actually in Los Cabos, Mexico. And um, more specifically, I'm in the community of La Carbonera, Mexico. And it is, and uh, La, oh, La Carbonera, I'm sorry, La Playita. Mexico and uh, I had a flashback to when I actually uh, did a rebuild in La Carbonera, Mexico back in the 80s. What we, a hurricane de devastated the city of La Carbonera, Mexico and uh, Don and I landed up contacting um, Missionary Aviation Fellowship and they flew us from Orange County out to La Carbonera, Mexico, where we met with the president and we rebuilt the entire community uh, with, in partnership with uh, World Vision. But that was, that was uh, back in the 80s and uh, I just continued, I've continued to pray for that community ever since. And so that's why that name came up in my mind. But uh, here we are, we're trying something a little different. So we... <laughs> couple of little distractions here and there. I hope you can appreciate that and I hope you can appreciate this time because this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, today what I want to do is I want to talk with you about the third commandment that we find in Exodus. And so I want to start by having a moment of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time that we have to be able to gather around the world with your people. No matter where we are in the world, we can always connect on Sunday morning, 8 a.m. Pacific time, and know that we can be here at this time together. We can, we can circle the globe with your love, with, your, with prayers, with your power. And so we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we have to be here this morning. And so we praise your name and we honor and glory, glorify you with everything we have. We love you, Lord. Amen. And all God's people said, wherever you are, you can say it right now. Amen. And all God's people said, amen. <laughs> so I'm really happy you're able to join us in this time. And, and I want to read today the, the Ten Commandments because the Ten Commandments are something that God gave us as things to follow. Remember, they're not 10 suggestions, they're 10 commandments. And yet many, very little talk about the 10 commandments. So let me share. They're found in the book of Exodus chapter 20. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. He took us out of slavery and brings us freedom. God is all about freedom. That's what God wants to give us. He wants to give us freedom. So here are the Ten Commandments. He says, you must not have any other gods but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or the sea. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go When the people of God heard these things, <laughs> they, they trembled in fear and they said, Moses, don't let God speak directly to us anymore, but let him speak to you and you just tell us what he said. I just find that very fascinating to think that the voice of God was so terrifying that people were afraid of him. And I think that's one of the reasons that God speaks to us in a quiet, still voice. He still speaks to us, to you if you listen to him because he loves his people, he loves his children, and God loves you. But today I want to pay specific attention to, to Exodus 20, verse 7, and this is known as the third commandment. And the third commandment says, you, sh says, you shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. 
That's the that's the king. As a child, we'd read and we'd read them throughout th th other times of of the year, and they were part of who we are. They were they were they were. Part of being a Christian was following the Ten Commandments. Part of being a good citizen in the United States of America was knowing the Ten Commandments and following the Ten Commandments. The part of being just a, a human being was knowing the Ten Commandments. <laughs> and the first four Ten Commandments are all about are all about our relationship with God. You know, we talked about the first one two weeks ago. In fact, you can go back and you can see the records and you can you can you can see it and you can download it and watch it and then you can see the second one today you get to hear my third message which is all about do not misuse the name of god which is actually the new international translation and if i talk about translations here i have to say that translations are literally uh taking the words that we have from the greek and the hebrew and unless you know Greek and Hebrew, you have to have them translated for you. So as, as you may know from translating other languages or hearing other translations, that there's lots of different translations that communicate to us. And I like the, the, the New International Translation. And then the reason I like the New International Translation, uh, well, there's several reasons. One of it is because many of my professors in seminary participated in that translation. Uh, second of all, they've, they've shared with me how intricately they looked at the different passages and they did everything they could to, to take the, the Hebrew, which in, in this case is what the Ten Commandments is a translation from the original Hebrew into a modern English where we can understand it and comprehend it. The King James was perfect in its day. It was the modern language for people in the in the 15th century when King James of England ordered this to be translated so everyone could understand, which was one of the first translations. Well, today we have new translations and there's lots of them. And I like the New International because of its accuracy. Do not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Now, I was raised with the idea that that means you don't use God when you swear. In other words, if you hit your hand, you hit your, hand, your, your, your thumb with a hammer, you're, you're nailing something, you don't say, oh, G-O-D, when, when you hit your, your thumb. You know, it would be better to, it would be better to, to use other curse words like, like F or S or, or something like that. But what I personally do is, is when, I, when I hit my, my thumb with a hammer, I go, I just say complete nonsense. I've been doing this forever. And I want to encourage you to, to, to start thinking of, uh, of something that you can use to be able to make a difference. So, so anyway, I just, I just want to, <laughs> I just want to encourage you to, to realize that, that God does not want you to misuse his name. Part of that is using his name as a swear word. You do not want to use the name of the Lord your God as a swear word. <laughs> a friend of mine, his name is, is Dorsey. His last name is Dorsey. And when he golfs, every time he makes a missed shot, do you know what he says? Dorsey. And he, he was golfing down in Mexico. And he had a caddy. And as he's golfing, he would miss his shot and go, Dorsey. And, and, and he would... He would miss another shot and go, Dorsey. And, and it was really unusual because at the end of, at the end of, his, of his golf round, his caddy came up to him and said, Hey, man, what does Dorsey mean? He had thought he had learned a new English curse word. And the fact is, it was just his last name. Uh, I would encourage you, if, you're gonna, if, you need to, if you need to swear because you hit your... Your, your thumb with a hammer or something, by all means, never use GD. Because what you're doing is you're making a declaration, God, this something. Well, if you hit your hand, hand with a, if you hit your thumb with a hammer, there's only inanimate objects involved with one exception. And that exception is you. And God can't damn an inanimate object. <laughs> he can only damn souls. So if you say, 
GD. When you hit your thumb with a hammer, it's not going to be the wood. It's not going to be the nail. It's not going to be the hammer. So guess what you're declaring? So don't do that. But you know what? There's a lot more important things. And there's a, many more important factors involved with this commandment than just using the name of the Lord uh, uh, as, a, as a swear word. And the more important factors that we need to look about is the idea and the whole concept of spiritual abuse. And I think this is the proper or more important concept of using the, the Lord's name in vain or misusing the name of the Lord. For instance, I've had people come up to me in my ministry and they've come up to me and said, God told me that you're supposed to be doing X, Y, Z. And I'm going, uh, if, God, if God wanted to tell me that, why didn't he tell me? Why did he tell you to, to use his name to obtain power or prestige or pr position or some other or, or, or influence to try and convince me to do something that that God hasn't told me to do. <laughs> and yet you're coming to me and saying, God told me to tell you to do this thing. That is a misuse of the word of God. That is misusing the name of God, saying God has empowered me or privileged me or empowered me to be able to, con to use his name to control you. That is spiritual abuse. It's happened to me about six times in my ministry and in my life. Maybe you've had people do that to you. And if you ever have that happen, just shake your head and walk away because God will not communicate with you in that manner. He'll communicate with you directly. And I've had that happen to me twice in my life where I've heard the voice of God. And within six months of this declaration, God actually... God, the things that God told me was going to happen took place. I remember the first time was with, uh, when, he, when he told me that I want you to build your church there. And he pointed to and and I looked and there was this 97-acre ranch in Southern California, an extremely valuable piece of land. And within nine months, that land was gifted to the Christ Cathedral Ministries and I built my church there. The second time God spoke to me is when I shook the hand of my son-in-law. Well, I had no idea that he was going to be my son-in-law. I'd never met the man before. I didn't know if he was married or single. I shook his hand and he said, this is your future son-in-law. I took a step back and I shook my head. And what was that? And when he spoke to me, it was just a thought in my head, but it was in the, it was in the third person. It was as clear as can be. It was so clear that my, that I had no doubt whatsoever that these things were going to take place. It never happened to me before. It was the first time in my life those things had happened to me. And, and nine months later, he proposed to my daughter. You know, we have to be careful to, to, and recognize the fact that God has given us a command. And the command is, is not to use the name of the Lord your God in vain. Do not misuse the name of God. People have done this. Pastors do it. I've, I've heard pastors say from the pulpit, God told me to tell you this. <laughs> and, and I've had it before where they've said, God told me to tell you to put $20 in the offering plate. <laughs> you know, it's, it's almost comical to, to think about. But the fact is that whenever somebody misuses the name of God, it's, it's against the commands of God. It is not what God wants us to do. God wants us to, to be true and real. And by that, we, if, we're gonna, if God has something to tell us, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's in this book. It's in this word. People don't have to say God says. He, they can say God tells us. It's in the Bible. It's written here. So I can tell you that God wants you not to misuse his name. Why? Because he says so right here. It's written. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. And that's what he says right here. And, you know, there's a third way that people misuse the name of God. And, and, and I've only 
I've only had it happen to me a few times, and it's always been by a psychotic individual who's come to me and has said, I, I am God. <laughs> and you kind of, I am, usually they say, I'm Jesus. I am, I've returned. And it's almost always a psychotic situation. But there's only been one time in history that I'm aware of, that I believe, because the Bible tells me this, where it's been true, where God came in the extension of a human being, and his name was Jesus. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And because of that statement, the Sanhedrin, the uh, Caiaphas, the, the leader of the Sanhedrin, made it his point to, to make sure that Jesus was crucified because it was considered blasphemy. <laughs> and Jesus said, uh, said, I and the Father are one. And in the, he fulfilled all the prophecy of the law. And everything we see and everything I've talked about earlier as far as how God speaks to us and, and how we know that the truth is, that, that what God says is true, is, is found in the life of Jesus. All the prophecies he has fulfilled, without exception. The odds of all those prophecies coming true the way he said they would <laughs> is, is, is one in a billion. And so I believe that Jesus was God. How do we misuse the name of God? We claim we're God. Uh, we claim that God speaks to us and tell people what to do. And, and, and the third way is to simply call upon him and, and use his name as a swear word. So that's the third commandment. And I want you to be aware that, that God loves you, God cares about you, and that's why he sent his son Jesus to come and to, and to touch your life. So uh, with that, I want to have a, I want to say that God loves you. I love you. Jesus came into this world. He claimed to be God because he was God. He was God in human flesh. He came that you might have life and have it abundantly. And so on this beautiful Sunday morning here in, here in La Playita, Mexico, I, I just want to say God loves you and so do I. Let's have a closing prayer and I'll give you a benediction and we'll be on our way. I hope you've enjoyed this time. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for all of the joy and the goodness that you give to us. You have given us your Ten Commandments, not as suggestions, but as commands so that we can experience your fullness of grace and love and joy. And so we thank you, Lord, and we praise your name always and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you his peace. And you're lying down and you're rising up in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next week.